Hi, I'm Marty Johnson from 3D Systems. I'm here to introduce you to a set of module training we put together for your figure four printers. This module training is to help to provide to you what our success is in the lab so that you have success in your endeavors with your figure four printer. All right, well, good morning. I am Marty Johnson, and we're going to look at module nine for materials. And this is going to represent printing with figure four rubber 65A. This is a new rubber material that we're launching here at 3D Systems. It's a great material. It's got a high elongation. It's got a really uh, tough tear strength. And it's a material I think that people are going to really like a lot for a lot of their rubber applications. And so let's start. I am Marty Johnson, a technical fellow here at uh, 3D Systems on print process. I've been at 3D Systems since 2007. And during this time, I've had a lot of experience on print process for projector-based systems as well as uh, plastic jet printing systems. And print process here at 3D Systems includes full system integration. So we're talking about creating the print processes from hardware, firmware, and software and pulling all that in together in one package so that the user has the best experience in printing their parts. But we're gonna focus on the software and how to set up parts in 3D Sprint and some of the best practices that you get <clears throat> for Rubber 65A. As you can see, this is gonna be module nine. Uh, we did leapfrog modules five, six, seven, and eight, and those will be caught up in the very near future. Some of the goals that we've got for module nine are, are, to, are to really understand the different part type applications for rubber 65A uh, and to understand how and when to use different support styles. And we're gonna look a little bit more in detail at the tips used for uh, post-processing as well. Just some high level tips. Uh, I wanna be sure people have some ideas on what they can use for rubber 65A material. Uh, the first one, I would really want to point people to use the data sheets to find your best mechanical and performance properties of rubber 65A materials to be sure that that material has the properties you need to support the application. We really want people to be able to know the application and intents of their part up front, and then you can see that your material supports that and so that you get the best experience with your material and your part. Also, when using 3D Sprint, want to point out the support links for best practices and we'll look at that a little bit more but it is going to be a good portal to find really good information on how you set your parts up and what some of the knobs means and where some of the help is. Uh, some of the setup and orientation things we'll look at is printing thin walls you know generally want to put those at an angle this is a rubber material and so generally you would not put a, an elastic rubber type material printed in a horizontal position if it's thin because you're gonna get some distortion in your part. So it's best to set that up and frame it uh, for your thin walls. Uh, in addition, we're gonna to try to match the best support style for the respective part orientation. We do have flat supports and we also have uh, some that are for angled parts. And so we wanna match up those support styles too the way the parts oriented so you get the best result. Uh, how to modify the support tips when necessary. There are times that you may want to thicken or reduce the, the support tip based on your part application. Uh, another tip is to be sure to mix the material in the tray before each use. Uh, you do not want to contact the film, but before each use, it's just a good habit to go in uh, and take the, the white, uh, mixing tool that comes with your figure four printer so that you can mix up the material in the tray together just to keep a good consistency within your material as you print. Another tip is do not leave parts on the platform for more than 12 hours after a print is completed. Uh, and the reason for that is, is with the rubber material over a period of time, that those parts can start to peel and come off of your print plate. So if you're printing parts, overnight, you should be fine to come in the next morning and pull those off, but you have to be conscious of leaving parts up over the weekends, for instance, or if you're gonna be out longer than that, it's good to make arrangements to have your parts taken off of the, off of, out of the printer. And, follow, and finally, I wanna really, really emphasize to follow the post-processing instructions in the user guide. If you wanna get the material properties that you'll see in the data sheets, if you wanna get the performance properties, if you want to get the cytotoxicity results, 
all of that kind of stuff, you really want to be sure you're following the post-processing instructions in the user guide. If you deviate from these uh, post-processing instructions, you could get a different result and you'll have to re-verify that for your application. And so now let's go to the demo and start looking at parts. I want to do, we've got several different parts and things that we want to set up and show you how to use in 3D Sprint. And we've got our rubber material here. Let's go back up and import. And so the first kind of part I want to bring in here, this is a shroud, it's a rubber cover. Uh, there's a couple of things I would like to point out about this part. Uh, one is, is when you're looking at tall parts, especially something that, that's a cover, you really want to be sure to minim to have something larger than a two millimeter wall thickness. You can imagine if this wall thickness is thin and you're going to build this tall part and you've got a rubber material, you've got a real good chance of having some distortion. In addition, when you have your supports connected to those really thin walls, that could cause issues in your post processing. So it's really recommended to have parts that are uh, thicker than two millimeters. Uh, this particular part it's got about a three millimeter wall thickness in its thinnest areas that you'll see here, and it's a little bit thicker in some of the other areas. One of the other things I'd like to point out is this particular part, the way it came in, it's set up where you've got these points at the bottom. And this is really not an optimal orientation to build the part. Uh, this is in rubber 65A or in any other uh, part actually. It's a good practice for supports. If I go in and set up and choose uh, my, su my supports and we'll just pick uh, we'll pick the fine round tip parts and generate those. And we'll give it a second to finish generating supports. And there we are. Uh, looks like a lot of supports from the bottom. It's really not. There's some cavities um, and there are some things that you'll need. When you have a rubber material, though, I will point out that you're, go you're going to be using supports a little bit during the process to maintain the shape of your part. So you, you may have to use a little more supports than you normally have used in some of your more rigid parts. But one of the other things I'd like to point out, if I go in and use my clipping, as we've done in modules three and four, and start to raise my part, you'll see that your part starts in two different areas. And as you start to build that up, these parts are building, you're gonna experience some slight uh, uh, shrink or distortion that you may get. And when those join at this point here, what you may see is a line in your part. Uh, again, I say that as I, as I mentioned before, this is a this is a thing that you'd like to avoid getting in this situation with any part, because when you support parts that come up separately and they come together, uh, there are chances that you're going to see a witness line in that part where they come together, because it only takes a very small amount of movement within one of these parts to set that off differently than what your part looks like in space in your CAD. So how do we fix that? We're going to remove these supports. And we're going to rotate the part. I will point out that a lot of the controls and the things we're doing in the supports, we go in great detail in module three and in module four for 3D Sprint basic and intermediate training. And they'll show you a lot of the things that we're going to do in, in great detail and show you where some of your helps uh, are, and I'll go ahead and click on this one real quick, just to give you an idea of the kind of things you'll see in your help. But you'll have under transform, for instance, that we clicked on, it'll tell you what those instructions do, what each one of these uh, parameters means, and how that is used within the part. So you've got help available to you all the time in 3D Sprint. You just have to click on the help icon, 
or if you see a yellow link, sometimes you can go to the yellow link and it'll take you to even more information. So now that we've got the part set up here, we're actually in our transform. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna rotate this in the other direction. And now when I look at this part, I'm building from the full part all the way up where I have the separate parts, they're actually building onto what has already been established as the main body of my part. As I do that, and let's go back, one thing I do want to point out is anytime you rotate a part, check and be sure that your men's support height is snapped to where it needs to be. And the men's support height for the rubber 65A is set at five millimeters, and that's to help the material flow and some of your early layers due to the way that we do the support. So you'll want to keep that at five. You'll see that at three millimeters on some of the rigid parts. And so let's set your supports up again. And we'll let that generate and catch up to us. Almost there and there we go. And so you can see the parts supported. Uh, you actually save a little bit of space on your parts in the middle because you are self-supporting among this section that's coming up on the inside and this front wall. But let's take a look at a little bit closer of what these supports look like. And I, and I will say, anytime I'm supporting a part that starts with an edge like this, whether it has a small radius, a large radius, or even a sharp edge as this one does, you really want to go in and be sure that that is supported to where it cannot wrap, rock back and forth, which would be to the left and right here. Because you're, as you build this part, you're going to be pushing this down into the liquid every time you do one of your interval moves to raise and lower the platform. And so what you're going to get are some hydrostatic forces that can move your part. And now we're doing this with rubber supports and, and rubber parts. You really want to be conscious of this here. You still want to be conscious of that with rigid parts, but you really want to pay attention to that. And, and it's going to move similar to if you take a beach ball and push it into a swimming pool, it's going to want to move left or right. And it's the same type of phenomenon with those hydrostatic forces that's going to want to move your part around. So when we set that up, I'm going to go to the bottom. And let's go in and look at this line here. And you can see from what I'm saying, there's only supports on this line. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things. What I would like to do is see this. I'll check this to see if there's any real gaps. I'm going to go ahead and add a support um, in these gaps to prevent a scalloped edge. I'd like to move these out, even these out a little bit as well. And let's just go down this line and clean this up a little bit. We'll add a few there. We just want a more uniform edge when we come out. Oh, I moved that off the side there, didn't I? and set a more uniform edge. So now that your sharp edge line looks better, but that's not enough. So as I mentioned, I don't want this to rock back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and add some supports because everything builds off of this bottom part. And so I'm gonna come back on the other side and I'll usually kind of stagger these in a staggered pattern as you see here just to give me a little better support on those structures. Now, when I build this and it tries to go back and left, I've got a support on either side that will help give me structure on the area of my part that's the basis of where this part's going to uh, evolve from. And so let's look at this a little bit further. This particular part, whenever I look, I've got these edges. And again, we're, we're printing this in the rubber, so I want to kind of be sure that I'm holding this shape pretty well. So I'm gonna go back and look up where I've got these radius edges. I may put a few up the sides here and it's like, wow, that's a lot of supports. Well, really, um, 
one of the nice things about these support tips is they're very small. Again, they, they're called fine tip uh, for a really good reason is that they are very small and they should clean up quite well. And I'll put a couple here. And I'm gonna go in just because everything's building off of this bottom surface. Let's just go ahead and put a couple of supports in this area just to help again, maintain the shape of my part. And let's bring this up where you can see what I've done here. So what I've done is I evened out the supports along the sharp edge. I added some supports to give me sort of a tripod on the left and right sides of that edge to prevent my part from moving back and forth through the hydrostatic forces. I added some supports along the edge here to help maintain that edge shape and give me balance as I build the larger part above it. And a little more support here in the middle to also so, uh, allow for that balance. And so when I move this around, uh, I can kind of see where I've put everything. I, I like what I've got so far. I'm holding the shape pretty good up the sides here. If this were only one row of supports, I would have added a second row to help keep that edge uh, lined up. And let's update our supports. And I think this is what I like. And I've actually built this part in this orientation supported like this, and it came out very well. So now that I'm done with the supports, I do want to make it a really good habit to go back in and let's save my part. And we'll just call this the uh, We'll call it the Thick Shroud 2. I think I've got one in there already. And it'll save that part. So now if I need to open this up again and make any adjustments, I've got that part set up. So for general purpose, just to highlight, I want to get rid of or uh, reorient my part so that I'm, I'm not building from two different areas that to combine back into one to try to prevent any kind of witness line. And then I wanted to make sure that I, I covered my line, I cover, I get the tripod in there where I don't have my left and right motion and a little more support on the edge. And that's how we end up supporting this cover part. So now let's close this and I'm going to bring in another example. And let's grab my grip here. And I brought in something a little bit big, so let's just let's just shrink this a little bit. And I think this is good um, from a scale standpoint. I've set up in a standalone printer, so it's a little bit shorter in my Z height. In a modular printer, this would not be an issue, but because I've set this up in a standalone printer, uh, for example purposes, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that we can use this for uh, the example. Notice I did a scale function and I look over here and as I mentioned before my Z height has changed. I know that's going to be set at five. Now it's back to blue and we're in an area where we can print this. So when you get these flat surfaces on the bottom like this, <coughs> then what I want to do is use a different support style. <coughs> and so let's go back to our smart supports. and generate those. Okay, that's not very pretty at first sight, and that's okay. And one thing I do want to point out is, when we set up support styles in 3D Sprint, you're trying to set up a support style that that support style is gonna catch most things. It's gonna lean a little bit more to, con to a conservative style so that you get the print reliability. And so the reason we do some of these training videos is to show the user how to go in and look at this part and evaluate the part and make the slight modifications they need to do to the support styles to get the desired result. And for that one, I actually used the different general top. Let's go back to the flat dense supports because that's really what I wanted to use on this because I've got this flat surface. 
still have supports going up the edge, still have supports in places that I don't necessarily want to put them. So let's modify these supports and see what we can do. Now, I already know that these are going to be self-supporting because I can go in and look and see that it's, uh, it's building upon itself as you go. So let's go in a race, and I like to use the box. And so we can go in and, and remove those supports. And we should be good there. <clears throat> let's go back to our view, and let's look at our bottom. The bottom has a pretty good setup of supports. And, the, and as I mentioned, this is called a flat, dense support. So we're really looking at this on these larger flat surfaces. So let's update and see what this looks like. You can see there's a really fine tip on these supports. And they set up pretty well to go through and, and connect and cover the bottom of my part. Now, one thing I am looking at here is I see these supports in the middle, and that may be a little more dense than I want in that part. Uh, because we're holding up a, a part of the top that's supported at the edge, so you're building off of the edge. And so really, it's the, only, it's the smallest part of this is what I'm really going to need to support. So let's go back and look at that. And we're going to go modify this. And what I'm going to do is just go in uh, and get rid of get rid of some of these supports. In fact, it might be easier. Let's just go in and erase all of these and add our own. And we'll just create our own pattern. With something that we think we can still use. And have decent results. And I may put a couple in more in here. And then let's update these supports. You can see it's a little less dense. And the reason I did that is if I have a real dense area of supports, it's almost those were almost solid, and I'm building up through the center of this part, there's going to be a lot of heat that's given off in the inside of this part. And it, could it may could cause me to have some issues as we go up uh, because you're not really getting that material cooled off as it's building. So let's go up here and see our... Uh, our full part and this is what we end with. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to go save again. And we'll save the grip. There's another thing that we can do here for this part as well. So if I want to build a lot of these and, and I've and I'm not sure am I certain what I made the change I made at the top, is that going to work out the way I want it to or there's some other things that I'd like to see. There's a way we can do this, and this is one of the great things about figure four, is because of the speeds that we have in figure four and, uh, and the ability to go in and, and make quick changes in the software, I'm going to go in here and look at the front, and I'm going to use my split function. And what I'm interested in is how does this bottom part build and how does the top part build? Well, without having to wait to build this entire part, let's go in and just make it make a cut I'm going to make a cut at the bottom and I'm also going to do a split at the top let's just get rid of the middle part we'll hit auto place here and see where we are now now Instead of having to wait on the entire part to print, we're only going to print this first 25 millimeters. And so we ought to be able to get through there pretty good. So let's take a look at that then with our supports. You can go in, go back to our smart supports. Yeah, we can combine these. Uh, we're looking at the flat, dense supports again. We still got some of the supports on this edge here, so let's just take a look there and modify those. We know we did not need those before, so let's use our box function again. So 
Sometimes these will hide on you on the middle part of that. There we go. Now we've got rid of everything except for these supports. Again, looks like a lot of supports on the bottom of this. One thing I will point out, we're most interested in what happens in the center of this, not necessarily the edge. Again, these are the same really small supports that we had before. So let's look at the bottom. I'm going to get my view back and go in here and set this up similar to what we had before. It's a little hard to make out the bottom. A lot of times I'll go click on the sharp edge in my view and the view will help me pick out where exactly that bottom part is. And I'm going to erase all of these in the middle again. Because this is the area I'm most concerned with to see how this builds. And I'll go back and add those supports similar to what we did before. Uh, let's take a couple more over there. Update supports. Hindsight, I probably would have gone back and put one here in this area. Um, but now I can go in and take a look and see how my parts look. And I can print this. This is going to take me much less time than what it took to print the entire handlebar. I don't use the extra material. And I have a good feel for where my supports are. Uh, using the split function to go in and look at things like that is a tool that I use a lot. Uh, for both rigid parts and, and anything that I'm doing that I'm not real sure about, I'll use the split function. I may take and support this two or three different ways and just build this part to be sure I've got the right way. And that way I can get to the best solution in the most efficient, quickest way possible. Uh, that way there's no surprises. And when you're working with the, the rubber material, it's going to be a little more um, touchy to work with and because of the compliance of the rubber. And so you really want to pay attention to when you're supporting things, have I got it the right way, especially if you're doing really big parts. And again, once I have that, I'll go save. Uh, we'll just call that our grip cup, cut part. And be done there. So another thing that we run into with the rubber parts and in, in your rubber 65A, you're going to have tall parts sometimes, tall, thin parts. And you can imagine if you've got a tall, thin rubber part, it's going to be a little bit tough uh, to build. So let's look at how that works in 3D Sprint. What's a good way that we can do that? So I've got this tall tubular part. It's got a change. I'll point out a couple of things. Uh, there's no flat or edge. You've got a radius here. We're going to go up and take a look at. Um, you've got holes that you're going to have to keep round. And you're also going to have to support this edge up here because of the way this is set up. It's not just a straight column. So this is not a flat part. So let's go back to my supports. And let's go take the fine tip brown supports. And you can see that it puts some supports up the ladder. Uh, we've got supports on the bottom, but let's go in a little closer and see what we've got. Not bad. One thing you want to check is be sure there's no really thin supports that are really close to the wall because those can, those can cause you to have some issues, but we seem to be okay here. I'm probably going to want to do a little bit different um, with my round holes. And, and this is something that I talk about a little bit in the module three and module four in terms of how to support holes. And we'll talk about that again here. So let's go back to our modify function and take a look. And we'll start at the bottom. And I'll get my view back. The bottom of this seems to be supported pretty well. One thing, since we're starting on a curved surface, and uh, let's look at this from the um, with our clip here and see if I can zoom in. When you start to build and you've got a curved surface, 
see here that it's actually going to start with a very thin a very thin part and you look at this part and there are no supports on that part and so when i've got a curved surface and i'm building in z it's going to basically have to have um, I'll call it a line, but it's not really a line, but, but it's based upon the center line of that curved surface um, for the thickness of that layer thickness. So we're at, fit, we're at a 50 micron layer thickness. So this is a 50 micron layer, but there's not really a lot of supports there. So there's a chance that I'm gonna see a flat on the bottom of my curve. So that's one of the first things I'm gonna wanna fix. And so let's turn this over. And be sure that we've got this covered to get this section of the part. And that will help me maintain the integrity of that part. Now I'm gonna turn off my clipping here so we see the whole part. And can you can see where I'm at there. So what I may do because we wanna kinda of keep this, keep this curvature in a curve and not a flat area, I want to put a few extra supports along this bottom edge uh, because I know this is something based off what we looked at that we're going to want to handle. <clears throat> and so that should help me quite a bit there. And again, the supports here just ha helping me maintain the shape on the bottom of this part. This is, this is a tough print, uh, but it prints quite well if you make the right adjustment. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna remove this. Now, anytime we build, I'm gonna turn on the sharp edge again here. Anytime you build something that's round, and I'll go back through what we talked about in the other modules. Anytime I build something that's round, the way I like to look at this is, is I've got a circle and I've got a center line that goes through, we'll call it the equator. And so anytime I have something that's round, I want to support the bottom side of that equator on the outside, and I want to support the inside of that equator on, on the inside of the top. And that is what gives me the round part. So I have to look and see, am I satisfied with this in terms of how we're set up? I think we're pretty good here. I may stick a couple of more. Uh, oh, I'm on a race. Stick a couple of more here just for good measure. And then I may go in, these may not be needed, but let's add them anyways and see how, we'll see how the supports handle them. If we update the supports there. Um, so here's the reason I wanted to go back and check. There's two things that I don't like about this. One is this really thin support that goes um, from the bottom to the top. And the other one is I'm not sure that I like the support growing up out of the bottom of my tube because I'm probably going to set this tube onto uh, uh, a mating part and it's going to need to 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 mate over uh, a nipple on that part so that it can be held closed. So let's go back and look at this. So the ones that I added, let's get rid of that. Oh, I'm in add. Let's go get the erase. Is what we're going to need. The other thing I'm going to do is let me take a look at these parts, see if we can move these a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them maybe just a little bit over here and a little bit over here. We'll bring them out from the inside a little bit. And maybe we can get rid of that extra uh, string. So let's take a look there. All right, I made it worse because I moved it where we actually got it more on the edge for uh, what we need to get these little small supports. So let's go back and do that again. And I'm going to move these out closer to the edge. And that should get us a little bit better. We're going to modify those one more time. Still not happy. I've got us in a in a circle here a little bit. I 
tell you what, I don't like that at all. I liked it better the way it was in the beginning. So here's what we're going to do is we're just going to go in. And this is probably good that this happened because you can get stuck moving this around. I could spend a lot of time doing this or I'm just going to go back because I liked what we started with better than that. And I'll go back and do a quick modify on the bottom. And we knew that we had to do something through here. And we're going to give it some more supports along the side. And I'm not going to touch these in here. I will get rid of the one in the back. And we'll go with that. And I think that will work for us. So let's go modify and take a look at the top. This is down more down the center line, but let's give this a few more supports on the side as well. And this is not the bottom of the build, which needs to be a lot more robust. This one, we're just holding the shape. And we'll update these supports as well. And we've got our supports at the top to maintain our shape. We don't have any little strings, and I think this will work quite fine as we build this. So let's save this one. So this is just some things to look at when you're doing the tall tall parts and things to look at with the round circles. We jumped around a little bit there on the round circles, but it's the important thing to pick up from that is, is knowing that you're supported above and below the hemisphere. And you also want to, the other takeaway here is to be sure that you've covered that center line on the bottom of the part when you start a round surface. And we're gonna go in now. And so a lot of times uh, printing with uh, uh, for mechanical properties is something that a lot of us do with the materials, customers will do with the materials. Uh, a lot of people wanna verify what they see, which is always encouraged to verify your system and what you're doing. And so if I take a type four tensile bar, we're gonna support this one as well. And I'm just gonna go to the general round tip for this. And something to think about with a type four tensile bar is what you're after here is the application is I want a good clean tensile bar that I can test and I can put into the grips of my machine and I can test and I want reliability. I'm really not that worried that I've got the best flat bottom surface. I just want to print a half a dozen of these and then go out and see that I can get the bottom surface. So let's take a look at this. You see these supports at the top. I know this, is this can be uh, a bit of an issue. So I'm just going to get rid of these. Some tall parts, you may need it, but um, this particular part, we've printed enough that I've got a good feel that I know that we can handle uh, the ability to print this. But let's take a look again at the bottom. It's got two rows of supports. That's pretty good. I may just put a couple more in here because, uh, again, I'm after reliability. I just need this part to print uh, and print well. And let's update those supports. I think that's going to look good there. I've got a much bigger uh, tip going into these. This is a little thicker, and I think that's what you want in this kind of uh, uh, application because, again, you're just after a nice smooth part so that you can put it in your tensile tester. One thing I will show you is if these were not uh, at the right size, I'm going to go back here to generate and take a look at the tip. You can go in here at your pillar top ratio. This one is set at 0 0.275. I may go 0.35 here. And you'll see those get a little bit bigger. I don't like where that one went. So let's just go 0 0.5. Let's really push it up. And you'll see that he's got a lot thicker. Uh, that's probably overkill for this particular application. But this is where the pillar top ratio is a place you can go and adjust the tip to be thicker or thinner 
you can start at the default. I will tell you defaults are usually lean heavily to reliability. Uh, when you get into some uh, different scenarios where you don't want to take a chance, there's no trade-off for print quality necessary, I'll go heavy on reliability here. If I get into um, uh, smaller parts, I may want to go in and look, or if I've got a lot more supports, I may want to go in and look at that support tip as well. Again, that information, you can go click on the help button. Uh, that will actually take you to a page and it'll open it up. You can look at that tells you all about the supports, what the tips are, what these different uh, uh, parameters mean. And you can also go watch modules three and modules four that will give you more information on how to use those. And I'll save this one as well. Uh, it's our tensile bar. One of the things that's nice, and I didn't talk about this earlier, is uh, the reason I save these is I can always go back and edit them. Uh, when it saves a 3D print file, the actual file size is much smaller than your pixel size. So it's something I don't, um, it can vary in size depending on the triangles. But in general, I'm going to have smaller files so I can keep these and catalog these so I can go back and make changes as necessary. An example of that is if I go and close this one. And let's see, we want to go back and, and, uh, open and we want to go back and look at our uh, uh we'll take a look at the at the grip we want to open that back up it comes back with a support setup remember we made these a little less dense uh i like the way that is um, i can go in i can check the build style i have i'm printing these in standard i'll apply that and then I can print the file, save my part, and save. Uh, um, it'll either be a PXL file. If you're printing to your printer, you'll have an F4X file, which will be sent to your printer. So these are all examples of things that you can do um, to be successful with the different types of parts and geometries. One thing I do want to show is uh, there's a little bit when you consider the applications of the part, there are some things that the figure four does not do well. And I think it's real important to understand what those are. And, and the biggest and best example of this is if you go in and look at a part and you've got a big blocky part like this, this is not gonna print well in this technology. And I'll be honest, uh, I've got a big inject long injection mold Ex, uh, experience and I would not injection mold this part because it's going to be full of sink and it's going to have distortion and it's just not going to injection mold well. Um, the only technology that does well in these big blocky parts um, for me is extrusion and machining. This is just not something for an additive manufacturing solution. Uh, so if I were going to try to print this part, I would just say no. If I really needed this shape, let's say this is the key feature that I wanted and I was gonna use this as an edge or a locator, then what I would do is, if that's my application and that's my intent, then I'm gonna go back under here and I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna put some kind of honeycomb hatch and I'm gonna to try to create something with a uniform wall thickness, uh, similar to what I would do in an injection mold part and bring it back in here and then I would be able to print the part. So anytime you have big, thick cross sections, you need to think about that and, and, and say to yourself, could I injection mold this part? Uh, if I cannot, um, what am I going to have to do to do that? And, and one of the big rules of thumb for injection mold is go to uniform wall thickness. So what can I core out and support and rehatch inside my part that I still get the intent and the application? I still get the features that I want. I still get the, the visual effects that I want. But I can make this technology work for me to where I can print this part and be successful. Uh, so I really want to point that out. If I go straight in and try to point this, print this, uh, no matter how I support it or set this up, I'm going to be disappointed because it's just not the right part for the technology. So really want to call that out and be sure that that's understood. Okay, that is the end of uh, module nine. This completes the instruction and what we do in some of the different parts 
Uh, there's a lot of geometries. When we talk about printing parts, we're talking about organic shapes, which mean practically everything that you see. Uh, so it's really good to go in and think about these parts as what's my intent, what's my application, how do I need to set the part up based on some of these guidelines for that application and setup. Um, one thing I will point out on the on the rubbers when you set these parts up uh, and you start stack putting a lot of parts on your platform, you want to kind of maintain about a 15 millimeter gap between parts so that you can have the material flow. You know, we did looked at some things like the five millimeter height for your uh, supports that help the material flow while you're building. So all those little tips should help you be successful. And uh, good luck printing your parts and look forward to hearing good things.